Congratulations! You're watching ESN, your destination for news, views, and reviews that you can use. Let's jump right in, shall we, for this edition of Rapid Fire. Buckle up, Buttercup. Breaking news. December 19th, 2023, Article 1. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Why not? You're here with me. A1 generated imaging using brain activity hits record 75% accuracy. This is according to Japan Research. Artificial intelligence was for the first time able to reconstruct images from people's brain activity with over 75% accuracy. Blade Runner, hello. Researchers in Japan revealed this on November 30th. And until now, recreating images from brain activity was only possible when the subject was actually seeing them or when the type of images such as faces, letters, or simple figures were specified. The team of researchers from the National Institute for Quantum Science and Technology and other organizations has reportedly demonstrated that it's possible to reconstruct all sorts of images such as landscapes, complex figures, and some of these are based solely on thought. You can see this image right here. It looks like a merger of a of a donkey and I don't know some other weird animal or creature. This image is reconstructed by generative AI using recordings of a test subject's neural activity, and this was provided by the National Institute for Quantum Science and Technology. Here's the paper: Mental Image Reconstruction from Human Brain Activity. Hello, Black Mirror. Neural decoding of mental imagery via deep neural network based. Bayesian estimation. Let's just take a quick look at the abstract. I'm going to show you a few images and we're going to jump on to the next article. Visual images observed by humans, by humans, can be reconstructed from their brain activity. However, the visualization externalization of mental imagery is challenging. Only a few studies have reported successful visualization of mental imagery. Here's actually the PDF. Wow. They show something to the subject. The brain activity is then decoded with up to 75% accuracy. I mean, you might get spooked out by that a little bit. You might think it's nothing to worry about. Regardless, it's fascinating to say the least. Look at some of these images. So here is the presented image right here. And then you've got, whoa, weird. I mean, wow. Look at this one. That's pretty basic, but that's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. What if there comes a time when you're required to have all your brain activity monitored and then deciphered? That's a part of the job. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to share that with you. So here's the next article, though. California new rules wastewater into drinking water. On December 19, 2023, California regulators approved new rules that allow water agencies to treat wastewater and put it back into drinking water system. The new rules are California's second statewide regulations for turning recycled wastewater mm -hmm, into drinking water. Now, they do require that the water agencies treat wastewater and test it before putting it directly into the taps. Just to make sure, you know, I mean, anyway, need I say more? The treatment process includes three stages, microfiltration, reverse osmosis, and ultraviolet light disinfection. The new rules are a drought-resistant res supply that will be needed to meet community demands in the future. I mean, no wonder people love moving to California. The water's delicious. Oh, man. Most wastewater treatment plants already put their treated water back into rivers and streams, which then flow down to the next town so they can drink it. Now they're just going to take it straight from the, uh, to the California. They love you so much. All right. Then on December 19th, 2023, Iceland's Mount Fagradalsval volcano erupted after weeks of earthquake activity. The area known as has erupted three times since 2021 and is expected to erupt frequently. Hello. Iceland is one of the most volcanically active places on the planet. About one eruption every five years, not including submarine eruptions, Iceland's volcanoes are the result of divergent boundary between the mid-Atlantic ridges, tectonic plates, and the activity of Iceland's mantle plume or hotspot. There are several volcanoes right now 
active in Iceland. There have been evacuations. There are evacuations continuing in Iceland right now. And let's just take a quick look at the independent. Iceland volcano continues to erupt with more vents likely to open. This was just updated, as you can see. And the Icelandic Met Office has warned that more vents are expected to open as the volcanic eruption in southwest Iceland continues. As of Tuesday evening, three out of five vents are still active after the volcano on the Reykjans Peninsula, which began to erupt on Monday night, spewing lava and smoke over 100 meters into the air. An Icelandic Met Office spokesman said, while the eruption continues at Sundungsgiga, there is an increased likelihood that more vents may open along the original fissure as well as further north or south. Looking back at the lead up to the eruption reveals that there were approximately 90 minutes between the first indicators and the start of the eruption. Therefore, the warning time for new vent openings at Sundnuk could be very short. Experts have warned that the eruption could last several months as residents of the evacuated town of Grindavik had their hopes of returning home for Christmas dashed. The last 24 hours have been eventful for us, the local mayor said. Unfortunately, the hope that had ignited in the hearts of many about the possibility of celebrating Christmas at home in Grundavik was extinguished when the eruption began yesterday. Read all about it, independent.co.uk. This is pretty cool. As of December 11th, 2023, the F-35 Lightning II has a new maximum airspeed record that exceeds Mach 1.6 over 1,200 miles an hour at altitude. The F-35C can reach these speeds even when fully loaded with internal weapons. This is the fifth generation combat aircraft that can perform a variety of roles, including reconnaissance, ground attack, and air superiority missions. It has a range of 1,380 miles and a ceiling of 50,000 feet. That's pretty fast. 23 and Me breach, December 2023. 20, 23 and Me, a genetic testing company, reported that hackers access the personal information of nearly 7 million customers in a data breach. The hackers used old passwords from customers to access user profiles and post them for sale online. Article is from Time, Cyber Kendra, CNN, The New York Times. I'll leave links to the video description box. According to a December 4th announcement from 23andMe, hackers access the personal data of 6.9 million users. And this data includes user profiles, birth years, family trees, geographic locations, and health data. Wow. Comcast. Xfinity breach. December 19th. Comcast. Xfinity broadband entertainment platform has disclosed a data breach that may have affected 35.9 to approximately 36 million customers, give or take. The breach occurred between October 16th and 19th. 2023. Now, according to Xfinity's notice, the breach resulted in the theft of customer usernames, hashed passwords, and the breach is linked to the Citrix bleed vulnerability and is connected to a vulnerability in the company's software. ABC News, Cybersecurity Dive, The Verge. Been a lot of those lately, hasn't there? It seems to be in the media a lot lately, these pretty big number hacks. And I'm questioning what the outcome of that is going to be. How much, you know, why is all of this happening now? Is there something or somebody spearheading this or is it a bunch of rogue factions? That's something that hopefully is, is being looked into. And I'm sure that it is. I mean, I, I really, of course it is. Anyway, let's go to the next article here. NBC News, Greg Abbott signs Texas bill letting police arrest migrants who enter illegally. Texas Governor Greg Abbott on Monday signed legislation that makes it a criminal offense to enter the state illegally, setting up a potential clash with President Joe Biden's administration over immigration policy and border enforcement. ACLU files lawsuit challenging the new Texas law. That's ABC News. And then New York Times, Abbott signs law allowing Texas to arrest migrants, setting a federal showdown. It's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. 
here is a very interesting article as well. So I shared this with people previously, and I'm glad that it's still in the news. Look at this. In December 2023, the FDA announced that cinnamon applesauce pouches sold under the Wana, Bana, Weiss, Markets, and Schnucks brands contain 2,000 times the recommended amount of lead. The FDA says the samples contain 5,110 parts per million and 2,270 parts per million of lead. You've got articles from USA Today, News 12, Bronx, WPBF. The FDA is investigating the pouches after an inspection of a Ecuadorian facility that manufactures them. The inspection has linked the contaminated applesauce pouches to at least 125 cases of suspected lead poisoning. Jeez, that's horrible. How did that happen? And when things like this happen, my question is, what does the company do to make sure that it doesn't happen again? And how did it happen? Was it an accident? Was it intentional? And that information and research should be shared with the public. It'll probably make him feel better knowing that at least officials looked into it enough to find out how it happened and to make sure it won't happen again. My two cents. And that's about all it's worth. Okay, let's go to the next article now, shall we? Scientists, this is, why are Alaska's rivers turning orange? Well... As per, they're, they're, of course, blaming it on climate change, and the climate does continue to change. So what causes climate change? Well, there's a multitude of factors, but let's just read the article here, shall we? Scientists generally agree that the climate change is the cause of Alaska's rivers turning orange. As permafrost thaws, it releases iron-rich sediments. When exposed to air and running water, these sediments oxidize and turn a rusty red color. The oxidation of minerals and the soil may also make the water more acidic. Preliminary observations suggest that orange stream reaches have higher iron concentrations, less dissolved oxygen, and more acidic water than nearby clear water streams. This could have implications for the complex food webs in these waters and hold as yet undetermined problem for aquatic organisms and Alaskan communities. Well, yeah, you don't say. So this article that came out from Scientific American goes on to say that scientists who have studied these rusting rivers agree that the ultimate cause is climate change. Kobuk, Kobuk Valley National Park has warmed by 2.4 degrees Celsius or 4.32 degrees Fahrenheit since 2006 and could get another 10.2 degrees Celsius hotter by the year 2100. This is a greater increase than projected for any other national park. And Living out here, as an example, in southern Colorado, if I go up just a little bit further to like Silverton and other areas by Elwood Pass, which would be northeast of southern Colorado, it's in southern Colorado still, but it's northeast of Pagosa Springs. It used to be the route to get into Pagosa Springs by like horse and buggy. It's now a four wheel drive Jeep route or off road area. Where you definitely want to have a off-road, you know, high clearance, four-wheel drive, etc. But there's so many places in Colorado that you can see from the um, you can see from the mining how bad the rivers are, and they're orange and rusty looking, and they leave this orange film throughout the rocks and the streams and the river. So it's very noticeable. And that's from mining. And that's clearly man-made. So, you know, a lot of these problems are from big industries and mining. And the climate does continue to change. So we, you know, we know this. And there's a multitude of factors. It would be nice. It would be nice to see, you know, let, let's talk, let's, let's talk about the bright side of artificial intelligence for a minute. So let's let's jump to the next article here. And talk about artificial intelligence and the latest technologies. Because I'm actually a big fan of artificial intelligence and the latest technologies. And I'm also 
uh, a big fan of balance and having safeguards in place to make sure that things don't get overrun with digital intelligence that might become superior to human intelligence in the very near future. And if we don't treat it the right way, and if we don't create it the right way, well, there could be some very dire consequences. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the most powerful quantum computer as of right now is the IBM Quantum System 1. And this is as of November of this year, 2023. It is a quantum computer that is rapidly changing the landscape in the field of quantum computers. Now, the field is evolving and other companies and research institutions are actively working and developing their own quantum computer systems, which are absolutely remarkable and also very difficult to perfect right now because of the amount of qubits that are being used. Now, the Osprey quantum computer has 433 quantum bits and that's more than triple the size of their previous 127 qubit computer, which was record breaking. And it's eight times larger than Google's 53 qubit computer, Sycamore. IBM intends to scale up its quantum computer to over 4,000 qubits by 2025 and beyond. So the Osprey is a quantum processor and the quantum system one is a utility scale quantum computer. And the Osprey uses many of the same technologies as the Eagle, including a hexagon lattice structure on the chip surface that holds all the qubits. Now, the Quantum System 1 is a utility-scale quantum computer that is housed in RPI's Voorhees Computing Center, which is a former cathedral. Reuters, OpenAI outlines AI safety plan, allowing board to reverse decisions, the recent firing of, of Sam, and then rehiring was, you know, be like, wait a second, what happened there? People still don't really know what happened as far as why he was fired. Okay, so this is the latest info on Sam Altman. More details about Sam Altman's ousting at OpenAI have emerged. New reports suggest Altman may have at times been a manipulative leader. Altman pitted board members and employees against one another to maintain power. The report says that came out December 10th, Business Insider. Now that's the public story. Did that really happen or not? I don't know because I wasn't there, but I'm sure there's more news at 11. Elon Musk and others call for pause on artificial intelligence, citing profound risks to society. New York Times. More than a thousand tech leaders, researchers, and others signed an open letter urging a moratorium on the development of the most powerful artificial intelligence systems. This is the open letter. Pause giant AI experiments and open letter. We call on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and humanity as shown by extensive research and acknowledged by top AI labs. As stated in the widely endorsed Asilomar AI principles, advanced AI could represent a profound change in the history of life on Earth and should be planned for and managed with commensurate care and resources. Unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening, even though recent months have seen AI labs locked out, locked in and out of control race to develop and deploy even more powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. So that's very interesting. And I've been talking about this for years, especially next year, we're going to see what I call AI wars, not in the sense that it's actually war, but it's going to be AI battles. So it's like a metaphor. You're going to see companies and conglomerates coming out with new AIs that are better than the one previous. So I definitely see these, um, these protocols that need to be put in place uh, so it doesn't advance too quickly. I mean, I'm using chat GPT and I think it's awesome. It does great with writing and, and then I'm using artificial intelligence for helping create some of the thumbnails. So artificial intelligence, I'm a big fan of AI. And it's used in our everyday lives. They've got artificial intelligence and in everything, practically. So we can't just eliminate artificial intelligence. We need to be very cautious how smart we make artificial intelligence, especially when we've got these robots and computers and, and networks that work together that artificial intelligence could intertwine. You're going to have artificial intelligence that's going to be making its own 
bots. You're going to have bots making bots. And you might have bots trying to make bots clandestinely and then waking up other bots and creating other programs. And it's going to be very interesting what happens over the next few years, especially with robotics and the adoption of these algorithms, because they are so efficient when you know how to use them and, and work with them. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of UFC, huge fan of UFC. I've been watching the UFC now for over 15 years and just wanted to go over a few headlines with you. So if you watched last week's fights, Leon Edwards pretty much dominated Colby Covington every round. Um, he did seem to get a little bit tired the last couple of rounds and he let Colby Covington finish round five on top. I think he was doing that more just to be safe to make sure because he he secured the four previous rounds. And Colby Covington talked a big game, but you know what? He sure didn't, he, he sure didn't step up the plate. And, you know, he got real personal with Leon, which I thought was very it's one thing to be a jerk in the fighting game, but to to bring up others' family, especially like their past loved ones, there's no tact in that. And that's just going to piss people off. People, I'll bet, I'll bet you he lost a lot of followers and a lot of respect after that. He said some pretty stupid things in the past, though, too. He, he said some really nasty things to Usman. But he certainly does bring a crowd. And, you know, uh, former President Trump being there, Kid Rock being there. I think I saw Jared Leto. I think I saw Mark Wahlberg there and a few other people that are big names. So the, the UFC is definitely, it's like modern day gladiators. These guys compete at the very top levels and it's incredible to see what the human body can do. And I think after Colby's third title loss, and especially after his loss, the way that he lost this previous fight, it seems like he's spending more time on his character or character than actually his fighting. And you can tell he's trying to get into politics and, you know, I, I can see what he's doing. But he definitely needs to go back to the drawing board. And he also needs to go back to the, you know, get back into fighting again if he wants to compete at this level otherwise he's going to be a he's going to get into politics and do podcasts and get out of the fighting game. I mean this could be his last like, I don't think it's going to be his last fight. I think he's going to actually maybe he'll drop to 155. Uh maybe he'll train harder. Maybe he'll get new training partners. Um but that was a pretty lackluster appearance on his part. Uh, Leon Edwards has really stepped up his game. I mean, uh, you know, taking out Usman, the previous two fights, and the way that it looked like he was absolutely going to lose that first fight with Usman, and then he came back and, you know, like, was it the fifth round, the fourth or fifth round, and that head kick? Whack! And then he was able to defend the takedowns when their second match came. Pretty much dominated that fight. I, I wouldn't say dominated the fight, but he you know, he definitely won that fight and we'll see where he goes next. So I would say definitely. And then the whole thing with Sean Strickland jumping over the back, the, the row behind him to start punching Duplis. That was pretty ridiculous. Um, someone says it looks staged. Maybe could have been. It was pretty pretty lame. But let's jump to the next. You'll get add a little pop culture here. So Ozzy Osbourne says he's been working out every day, trying to get back on his feet. Seventy four years old, still rocking. I just heard his most recent song, pretty good, and he's still got it. He said he started doing Tai Chi to help with his symptoms of Parkinson's, and there he is, Ozzy Osbourne. During the latest episode of the Osborne's podcast, a 74-year-old rock icon shared that he's been hitting the gym every day, which is why he's been very tired lately. Dad's been really working out in the gym, Kelly boasted. 
Are you on the gains train to Swoleville, Jack? Quip before asking his father how much he's been working out. I've been working out every day, the crazy train singer said. I'm trying to get back on my feet. Well, keep going, man. Rock and roll. And thank you for listening to ESN, your source, everything news, views, reviews that you can use. Remember to question everything. Do your own research. Be prepared, not scared. And be the change the world needs to see.